Hey YouTube, good morning. Well, here we are the day after uh, Elon tweeted about version 10.13 having some improvements that will fix Chuck's turn as he called it. I have to say I was humbled that he directly acknowledged both my name and the turn that uh, we've been working on for almost two years now, a little less than two years, in October it'll be two years. But I thought just because while we're waiting on additional software to come out, maybe I would give a little description of what Chuck's turn actually is and what it looks like. A lot of the videos kind of show up from inside the car, from the drone view, but maybe I'll talk about it a little bit just in this video, just to show you exactly what it is uh, and walk you through some of the dynamics of it. So here we go. So basically, the entry point is a two-lane road coming out of a neighborhood, you know, and up to a stop sign that crosses a six-lane divided highway, which is the aggressiveness of this turn. In addition, there is a fence that partially obstructs the six-lane divided highway depending on how close to the road you get. On the opposite side of the road, there are four yellow signs that are warning you the road does not continue. There's railroad tracks over there, so there's train tracks, so it's just kind of the indication that the road does not continue. And in the middle, and I'm not gonna walk out on the road, there is a divided highway median that is probably about 15 feet wide. It's not quite thick enough for a car to fit in perpendicular. You have to kind of hit it at an angle like most, most medians you do. But the intersection, if anyone else with FSD in the Jacksonville or Northeast Florida area is Huntington and Roosevelt on the 4800 block of Roosevelt. Come on by and try it. The 8S drivers I've witnessed here myself, so I know that there have been some Tesla drivers collecting data on development cars, and I know that because I was able to see through the windscreen of their cars and to see the red and green data collection buttons that they have on those development screens. So as I walk out here towards the road, I'm just kind of showing you where the white line is. And if I back up, there's some oncoming traffic, but I'm not, I got a second or two. You can see the white line is a little bit off of the crosswalk. To get a view of this turn safely, because these cars are going about, the speed limit is 50, but usually on this long straightaway, they end up higher than 50, 55, sometimes much faster than that. And at 55 miles an hour, with the stated range of the B-pillar camera, you only have about three and a half seconds of reaction time until, you know, you're in trouble. So speed and range start to matter on decision making on finding gaps in this curve. And as you can see, as I come further back to right about where the stop line is, the perspective is completely obscured by the, the street. So you have to creep up to see down the street to get a full distance. But now you have the kind of the parallax and the, and the perspective where you have to pick gaps kind of down a long stretch. But a point I wanna make, and I get a lot of comments on the videos that says, well, you're, the drone shows your car wasn't actually across the line. I don't know anyone, and I'm gonna walk out here as there's no cars coming, that would stand on this line and let cars go by at 60 miles an hour. It's too close. You have to have about a meter of distance so that you can both be clear of the highway and be clear of any sort of deviations that oncoming cars might have if they started drifting off the lane. That's my feeling. Others may disagree. If we had a 100% robo-taxi world, maybe we can go to zero tolerances, but right now we can't, in my opinion. And out there in the median, I'll just say, you know, you gotta kinda cross and sometimes stop. Right now, the unprotected left turn logic is working on stopping at the medians. Prior to this new logic that they're working on, it needed the traffic to be clear both on the right and the left before it would attempt. So you got six lanes of traffic that you gotta manage. It's aggressive. There's a reason that this unprotected left is getting attention from Tesla. Um, so that's the description of the turn. Anybody in the area wants to try it, come on by. If you see me working in the yard, poking around the neighborhood, make sure you wave. All right, I'm gonna show you the camera setup now. Okay, I've got a lot of questions sometimes about my camera setup for my videos. I've showed this in the past, but might as well put it all in one video when we're talking about how I record unprotected lefts. So I drive a 2020 Model Y Performance. Um, I put a Insta360 
on the top of the car at the B-pillar location. So while I'm capturing 360 degrees of view, I typically only project about 180 degrees. But the important thing to recognize when you're watching my videos is that camera's perspective is from the B-pillar. So it's centered on the car and at the B-pillar. So when I give that wide angle, that's, that's what that perspective is. Uh, inside the car, I have uh, several other cameras. And I am using, uh, to record right now, my primary camera. But I have a tripod set up in the back seat of my car that's bungee down to the uh, seat belt. So that driver's camera is right about eye height. And I can show you from the back seat, it's just a little tripod sitting down on three legs that's strapped in. It's not perfect for stabilization, but it, it, it's good for me. Uh, and that's just a spare GoPro so you can kind of see how it would work. So the internal camera is coming from the uh, center of the console. Now, I have an HDMI screen mod, and I've had several iterations of this. Uh, I did one myself, uh, worked for about a year and a half, and then I paid Adam Urban to do a second one after mine kind of went on the fritz. And Adam's screen mod has an HDMI port out on this. And if you're interested in the screen mod, it's about 1100 bucks. last time it was priced. It's kind of expensive, but it works really, really good. And I use a 90-degree HDMI adapter down to an HDMI capture card. And I plug that in right there, and nothing changes on the screen. And my implementation of recording is with an old Android phone, backup phone, no SIM card. And, you know, I have a USB hub in here just so I can get the uh, USB-C port. And I have this app I use called USB Camera Pro. And when you open that app up with an HDMI source or a video input source, it's, I'm sorry, I'm not showing you, it's ready to record. And I just hit record and it records on this uh, Android phone and I extract it and, and embed it in my videos. So it's just another video source that I have to overlay. For my CAN bus data, I've done several iterations of this also. I use Josh Wardle's CAN server. This CAN server is tapped into both the vehicle and the chassis bus of the car. One of the uh, connection points is in the center console and the other one is underneath this passenger seat. There's lots of videos on Josh Wardle's website. And this captures all the sensor data for the acceleration, the torques, and all the other things I put on my video overlay. So that's basically it. I use the Insta360. I use a GoPro Hero 9 in the center of the car. I use an HDMI capture card for the screen. I use recorded data on the CAN server that I extract, and I guess I need to state, then I use OBS uh, as a screen capture device to project that CAN data onto a green screen and overlay it. That's much more complex than I can describe on this video. Um, but that's basically the camera layout. Oh, and the drone. Occasionally, when I fly the unprotected left, I have a drone operator that flies up and puts the drone in a static location uh, and is at the controls. And I also have my FAA 117, Part 117 operator's license uh, for, for drone permits, uh, which allows me to put these videos on YouTube. I uh, went through a little bit of a FAA discussion about monetization equals uh, a business. Uh, but in the end, I got my FAR uh, 117 license with the FAA so that there was no discussion about it. All right, that's the camera setup. Okay, YouTube, let's do a few unprotected lefts, maybe even a few forward facing so we can show you the dynamics of this turn. It's a little bit later now, it's 9.45 in the morning. Um, rush hour is mostly over. You can see we've got a left-hand turn programmed here and we'll see what we get. All right, there's the stop line. Needs to creep forward slowly. Slowly, he needs to stop. Okay, it stopped. Plenty of space with a good stopping rate. Now there's a small gap to the left and wide open to the right. Let's see if it goes for it. Hey, had a nice gap, nice continuous maneuver into the left lane. That was a perfectly executed unprotected left turn with a very large gap. It had to wait, it stopped. Nice job. Let's try another one. All right, here we go again. Left turn. Traffic's a little light right now, so it might get lucky a few times. Let's see how it goes. All right, got some oncoming left and busy right. It has to yield across the way in this one. 
All right, we've got a nice big gap to the left and to the right. It needs to stop. Okay. Okay, it tried to go for that one. Uh, wow, that was a little bit of an interesting dynamic where that car was there possibly blocking the view and it went for the gap, but the gap was stolen by that red car. Um, I mean, there's a scenario where really aggressive you could have made that, but um, I don't think I liked it. Let's try another one. All right, let's see what happens. Got a pedestrian here. Oh, that's a little bit new. Let's see what she does. She's going to use, she's looking at the stop sign. Okay, she's coming along the side, so she didn't cross, but it definitely recognized her, identified her as blue. There's the stop line. Now it needs to creep, 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 creep. Okay, it needs to stop. Oh boy, it creeped way out there. I mean, it's safe, but I, I wasn't sure when it was going to stop. Uh, okay, this is a this is a good one. There were very small gap here. It should not go for this. Okay, it didn't. And it might not have gone because of the traffic coming from the right too. So here, this is a really good scenario because I got, looks like this guy might even be doing a U-turn. It needs to stop. Well, okay. It, okay, it should not have gone then. I didn't expect that. It's been a little bit better at judgment than that one. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it was thinking. No matter what it needed to yield for this car, I'm gonna label that just for the sake of the quality of the data there. Should have waited on that car. There was a fast approaching car with no gap. And honestly, with that car in the median, me, my ability to get in the gap was even uh, constrained. Okay. We've got a little bit of gap here to the right. So I'm gonna wait on these cars and then I'm gonna go to the right. Okay, I'm gonna throw in a couple forward-facing unprotected lefts at this intersection, just so the visibility and the camera angles are good. FSD Beta is doing really good at this. The blinkers come on a little bit late. It decelerates before it puts the blinkers on. Let's see how it stops. It needs to stop. Okay, this is good. I got a great scenario here. I got traffic over here uh, that is turning right. Nobody's coming. Okay, it needs to really wait. It's, it's getting anxious. It needs to wait. Okay, I had to intervene there with full acceleration. It went for it, and uh, rather than stopping, I felt it was safer to continue. If it had used the right acceleration that I did, uh, that could have been safe, but that fast oncoming traffic is just not something I'm, um, I'm willing to risk. Okay, let's try this uh, forward-facing unprotected left again. Looking in the distance, it looks like this one's going to be a lot easier. Uh, it might need to pause a little bit. We'll see when we get there. Okay, the gap is closing. It needs to wait. I hope it doesn't go for it. It needs to wait. It needs to wait. Uh, ah, boy. Just the friction of me holding it there disengaged it as it oots towards the line. Perhaps it uh, it would have stopped on that line. I, I do have some safe, di safe distance, but just my hands on the steering wheel as it edged closer and closer to this rapidly ap approaching traffic was enough to disengagement, uh, disengage the, uh, the car. I did not intend on disengaging it quite at the moment it did. Uh, and it's not giving me a, a wheel at the moment. I do have a car behind me, so I'm gonna proceed manually uh, here in this next gap. But you can see here's where I'm gonna go manually and that's the kind of gap you would need. Okay, let's see what happens this time. All right, it's decelerating, no blinker. Uh, this one should be a gimme. Needs to possibly pause and then roll. Let's see what happens. Nice little pause there and a roll. So, you know, in some scenarios where it's definitely easy, it has the, the lateral path down. Um, all right, I think that's where I'm gonna end this today. I didn't mean for this to be a full testing video. It was more of an unprotected left turn uh, description of the what Elon called Chuck's turn uh, in his tweet yesterday. In any case, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.